people around this beautiful, pristine planet Earth. Welcome to another episode of Starseed Mission Support. We are so excited to be back here with everyone. And we're also very excited for the conversation that we're going to have today. It's obviously very pertinent to the planetary social spheres at this time. And so, yeah, before we get into this very nuanced and multifaceted conversation, I just welcome you all into the space. Let's take some nice, deep, welcoming breaths together. And I invite you to just breathe into the heart, land in your body, ground into the earth, and then ground all the way out into deep space, welcoming in the presence of our highest ascended aspects of self, welcoming in our angelic galactic teams who operate in complete alliance with original source consciousness, and we're just going to bask in these energies for a few minutes before we dive on in. So welcome to this live stream. Uh, welcome back to Starseed Mission Support. vibrations of original creation, the living light, the joy of creation, the original state of our divine existence in the collectified, unified collective sphere. And just breathe in and exhale any chaos, distortions, anxiety, Inhaling the goodness of prana, peace, love, the vibrations of our original essence. Exhaling disconnection, separation, judgment, fear. Anything that is not of our original essence, just allowing it to dissipate.
beloved starlings welcome to another episode of starseed mission support we are so excited to be here with everybody today we are going to be talking about gender and oh, what's happening here one moment yeah here we go we're going to be talking about <laughs> gender our sexuality, our divine sexuality, and the different kinds of psychological warfare that is raging itself across human civilization at this time. It is a very intense time. I've been tracking this energy now for a few months. Um, it's pretty intense. I feel like just in the last couple of months, this agenda, this thing has been amplifying in the media it's been happening for a few years now but it's kind of reaching an apex it's definitely being amplified and for those of you that you know maybe are not in tune and don't watch the news good for you um, but basically there is this situation in the planet particularly in the western countries where we're beginning to indoctrinate young children through the public schools about um transgendered ideologies, particularly about the destruction of um, the true feminine masculine energies, um, the true realities of our biological anatomy, that there are male and female bodies. These things are being heavily distorted in our world. And um, even, I mean, the most difficult part of this that has really inspired me to look into it has been the whole thing about taking children to pride marches and having children dance on um, poles. And I know that in the recent years, there's been this thing where people are doing pole dancing for um, ath uh, athletics and sports. And I think that is all great. As long as people are having fun is all fantastic. But it's very clear that when you do look at these videos of these kids that are around drag queens, they're not around that kind of sporty version of pole dancing. It is very sexualized. And we all know that, you know, drag is an art form, but in itself, it is a very sexual thing. Okay, that's not something that we can deny. It is a part of nightclub culture, it is a part of um, sex culture, sexualized culture. Oftentimes, drag queens are dressed up in very sexual ways and they do appear in nightclubs a lot so it is this very adult entertainment kind of thing that is now being uh, promoted to children a lot of nightclubs are having drag events that specifically invite children and over the last couple of years we have seen several child drag queens um, and this is something that really made me very uncomfortable at the number of people that were supporting this and particularly this push from very few radical people that I believe it's really a small group of people that are pushing this. And I understand that there is a very nefarious underlying reason they are pushing this agenda. So we're going to dive into all of that today. We're going to break down the gender war the multidimensional devastation of the creation forces, how this really comes down from the 10 and 11 dimensional anti-creation technologies that were built to invert and hijack creation energy and how that has basically precipitated, prepis, what's the word? Prepitated, precipitated, sorry, <laughs> precipitated down into the physical reality, into our human culture. And it's these same fallen angelics, fallen negative alien families, lineages, which are perpetuating these agendas here on earth. This has gone on for a very, very long time. And it also ties into the child pedophilia, ritual abuse, ritual sex trafficking, and that whole scenario. Okay, there are very spiritual, uh, multidimensional reasons that these things occur. And those reasons are creation level. They are all about the hijacking and the usurping of creation power. Okay, and once we get deep into that, it becomes very clear, you know, where that creation power comes from is the polarity. The feminine, masculine energy, the polarity that those two energies create is what gives rise to movement, to creation, to birthing. So those two forces 
are forces that we each have inside of us. And without understanding of our original template, it's almost impossible to have a conversation about gender and transsexuality, which I believe has always existed, okay? I think that oftentimes in the spiritual community and even in this current awakening movement, we can oftentimes get into this black and white, you know, one end of the spectrum, which is this movement that's being pushed, this propaganda. They're saying, you know, all transsexuality is good. We should shove it down our children's throats and make sure that everybody is using pronouns. And then on the other end of the spectrum, sometimes we're saying it's this energy that like maybe transgendered people shouldn't even exist or they don't exist. And it's all, you know, false and it's all an agenda and neither of those things are true. So we want to peel back the layers, realize just how many levels there is to this. And then ultimately, we really want to be talking about what the solution to this is, what the medicine is. And I always bring it back to the truth that you know, the only way that we're going to get out of this, the only way that we're going to create heaven on earth is if we fully remember our original template, the original divine expression of our own genetics, the original intended destiny of humanity, of humans. That is why we incarnated here in these human bodies at this time. More than just yelling at our loved ones about how there's this nefarious group of people controlling everyone. I want to red pill everybody. Beyond the red pilling or the real red pilling really comes from the remembrance and the activation and the blossoming of our own genetic potential. And that's what this is all about. The complete remembrance and activation and embodiment of our true highest Christed human self. And that is the path that we're all on. So zooming out to that perspective, there is a very serious holy war that is occurring on this planet right now. It has raged for thousands, possibly even longer, but in this current six, seven thousand year time cycle, this holy war has raged on as long as we can remember. And in the most recent hundreds of years, we've seen it in the genocides of the spiritual people that are occurring in China right now the genocides of the Christians, the genocides of the Cathars. We have seen this in the witch hunts, okay? This war on holiness, on holy creation is nothing new, and we're just seeing new faces of it, okay? And this force is basically wanting to inverse and perverse everything that is holy and divine and usurp it because when it twists these geometries, it's able to then siphon these creation energies and almost use these creation energies to um, commit their own uh, agendas. Okay. And so before we dive into all of that, let's just do a nervous system check. Let's just tune into our heart, tune into our body, tune into ourself. How are we feeling right now? Do we feel grounded? Are we feeling excited? Are we feeling happy? And then I just invite you to tune into the original Lemurian jungles where there is mist and moss and water and all of living life is in divine coherence and harmony. There is deep respect for all of life embedded in the fabric, in the DNA, in the genetic expression of all living creatures, of all of life. And we breathe, breathing in that peace, in that harmony, okay, in that exuberant aliveness. Bring that into our body, into our nervous system, and just allow any chaos and any anxiety to just dissolve and be released. Okay, know that that is not our inherent, neutral, original state of being. And I know that there is no reason for you to not be in a state of relaxation at this time. Okay. Take a deep breath and we're going to come into our conversation. Okay, so let's first set the stage with the basic premise that life is sacred. Okay, if there's one thing that we can all agree on, but if it's one thing that has been completely and utterly forgotten in our world, it is this truth that life is sacred. 
And I believe that this is the original lie, the original distortion, the original virus that was inserted into the human genome, into the human collective consciousness, is this forgetting that we are sacred and not just you know, humans as a collective, not just all of life, but we individually, every single one of us, every individual human being, every human body is deeply sacred and embedded and woven into the original divine tree of life. Okay. And so there's all of these viruses that we call the anti-life, anti-self viruses that's been inserted into our subconscious from the time that we're born, we're growing up into this world and we're basically learning from the media, from our parents that, you know, we're just integrating this subconscious normal that life is random. It's mundane. There's nothing sacred or deeply meaningful about it. There's no such thing as a soul. And that we should hate ourselves for a lot of reasons. Okay, maybe we're not pretty. Maybe we need big eyelashes. Maybe we need to lose weight. Maybe we're not smart enough. Maybe we need to make more money. All of these things are designed to make us feel inherently not enough, not worthy of love, not worthy of life, not sacred. Okay, these are the original, the source virus of our whole conundrum on the whole planet. So having that as the foundation of our conversation is very important, okay? And because I think that once we know the original disease, and I think that that is the original source of all disease, is our disconnection from that very core truth, the very core reality that we are all one in this tree of life, and we're all sacred, and we are all worthy, and we are all valuable, and all of creation and all the beauties were created and destined for us to enjoy. That it was the original destined reality of humanity. Okay, and we once lived with awareness of this. We once lived in harmony with the land. I believe that the current day Native Americans of um, all the planets are the last descendants of the ancient Lemurian worlds where all of life was in harmony. And all of these ancestral cultures, indigenous cultures, they all share a very similar cosmology. Even if they have different myths and different creatures and beliefs, um, it all comes down to this, these very core central beliefs that there is a unified creation and there is har harmony and respect and that creation itself is alive and that it's sacred and we're all sacred and just... Being alive is part of this divine temple of creation that all things are a part of. There's no one ounce of this reality that is not sacred. Okay? And so as we set the stage, we realize that there's already just this immense disease that has perpetrated basically every corner of our society without even starting on the topics of our conversation today. I believe that all depression all suicidal ideation, all schizophrenia, all mental, emotional, spiritual, and even physical diseases come from this very original core wound of separation and these original viruses of anti-self, okay? And so when we tap in, we remember in our genetics through our soul that there's an original template of divine creation. And in this original template, there is a divine feminine energy and the divine masculine energy, and they both exist in perpetual union. There is no separating those forces. And those two forces exist perpetually in motion, in co-creation, in cosmic lovemaking, okay? in magnetic union, electromagnetic union. And these both energies exist in every single individuated form of creation, in every part of creation, in every plant, in every human, in every animal, okay? And in the Asian symbologies, you'll see the yin and the yang, 
And what it symbolizes is that there is a yin within the yang and the yang within the in. And there's absolutely no separating, even though those are two distinctly individual and, and different energies, they exist perpetually in union and in togetherness. There is no separating those energies. Okay. And so this is the original teachings of divine union, which are the original teachings of creation. When we master these forces, we master the teachings of creation and how we can co-create with universal forces to basically fulfill our destined, um, our destiny as a human vessel. The original intent of these human vessels were to be these vessels that could hold source, these droplets of universal whole that can experience the edge of itself, that can experience itself and be aware of itself creating and experiencing creation through the vessel. I mean, that is so immaculate and beautiful. And because of this amazing divine destiny of the human vessel and you angelics, the angelic indigos will feel this deeply that, you know, we spent a very long time deliberating on how these vessels should be woven, should be created. There was so much love, so much intent that went into the creation of these bodies. So much of its genetic expression, we don't even remember or have awareness of in our common human society. Many of these things were documented in the ancient mystics and shamans and seers, right? Our Siddic capabilities, the Siddic powers. Um, particularly, you know, we're talking about parthenogenesis, divine birth. This is the highest um, Siddic power that a woman shaman, a woman mystic can embody, right? And similarly, the abilities to miraculously and instantaneously heal our own body and others' bodies, and even to bilocate and um, transform, transfigure, shapeshift our biology. All of these things have been documented in so many different cultures, embodied in so many different masters that we hear about today. And yet those things, I believe, are the fulfillment or the destiny of our human potential. Meaning they're not reserved for a special few, but it is the literal genetic intent that is living inside of every single one of us. Okay. Okay, so let's just take a breath there. All right. So our human experience is really for an avatar an avatar creator who is destined to experience source incarnate with self-awareness, who can co-create with our opposable thumbs, right? We can paint, we can build architecture, cities, music, beauty, gardens, right? We can make this world even more symbiotic and more beautiful. And that's what we're here to do, right? And so understanding that there are these original forces of creation, the feminine and the masculine, we move on to realizing that our, for the majority of our society, you know, it really exists without the awareness of our soul. And this very huge misunderstanding has basically percolated into every science, particularly psychiatry and psychology and the medical sciences. I mean, without the knowing that there is a soul, which is a very real thing, Obviously, for all spiritual people, we can feel that we have a soul. We begin to realize that we have other lifetimes and other systems. We have awareness of um, even ancestral energy passing through the bloodlines that are symbiotic with our soul's energies. And the soul is orchestrating all of this alchemy that is happening through our energies. It is a very sad reality that the majority of our society exists without the awareness of soul. And without this awareness of soul is essentially the same reality as there being no divine coherence, there being no God, there being no divine orchestration or divine life force that flows through all things. And if a society exists without these things, and particularly it develops science, 
if our scientists are going about their discovery and their uh, perception of the world and they're writing things down without the awareness of divinity and soul, they're essentially unwittingly continuing and co-creating with Luciferianism or a fallen spirituality. Okay, because it's not really about beliefs. It comes down to true science. And true science means that we are studying the reality based on um, not just what we're perceiving with our five senses, but all of our senses. Not just what some people are seeing, but you know, taking into account all the experiences that so many people are having. And these are the roles um, of the seers, of the medicine people of the shamans that have existed in all societies, in all ancient societies, okay, throughout, throughout time. And so when our scientists are going about their explorations without this awareness, and this awareness is basically what we would refer to as the crystalla or Christ or the Christic knowledge, Christic teachings, you know, Christ is essentially having this awareness that divinity is coming into form. That's the very basis of Christ. It doesn't have to be a religion. It can be quite scientific. In fact, a lot of practitioners, even these, you know, ascended masters that we know, they approach things in a very scientific way, meaning there is no mysticism. There's no um, assuming. There is practice. There is study of how the nadial and the meridian and the energy systems of the body and the chakra systems are all acting as channels for divine incarnation, for the soul to animate the physical body. This is a Christic process. We live in a Christed anatomy. These bodies are imbued with Christ consciousness. They are intended and destined to be the vessels for divine consciousness. That in itself is what Christ is. And so then we add in this reality that actually many advanced souls are coming to the earth from beyond um, separation, from beyond um, individualization, from the source field, beyond 12D. Okay, so these souls, you know, are less experienced with polarity. They are very androgynous in nature. A lot of us are very androgynous, okay? Not androgynous in that we're genderless or sexless in that we come in very balanced with our inner feminine and inner masculine energies. I feel this very deeply in myself. Okay. I have very, um, cultivated masculine energies, even though I am deeply feminine <laughs> in a lot of ways, right? Those two energies are very balanced. So a lot of advanced souls are coming from source, coming from beyond 12D, and they're very non-experienced with polarity, and they're walking and incarnating here into this planet, and they're stepping into a society that has lost, has long lost understanding of true polarity and the original templates of divine feminine and masculine energies. And so these are kids being born into the world and now they are being pulled into um, how society is currently exploring these energies. And that is to say, gender ideologies, gender dysphoria, and all of those things that we're about to explore. Okay. And so we're going to start talking about the two spirit people, because transgender people have existed in all ancient cultures throughout the history of the planet, okay? From Lemuria to, I mean, in Lemuria, we were practically androgynous, okay? We were very androgynous beings because we haven't fully materialized yet. And so I believe that's another place where our bodies and our souls coming into bodies, if we have those memories, if we're coming from planets um, where we are androgynous or we're coming from fields beyond um, beyond uh, fractaling into these uh, bipole bodies, then it can be very confusing. But so many cultures have had these two spirit beings and they are highly revered. In these societies, like in ancient India, as well as Native Americans, as well as various African cultures, um, and in the ancient, ancient 
um, tribal peoples of Asia. Two-spirit and transgender people have been documented, and they are always, as soon as they're found, now remember, true um, trans and two-spirit people, they usually show signs of this at a very early young age. Basically, as soon as they're able to communicate, between the ages of two and four is when this will first become a thing. Okay, they want, they might say, you know, I feel like I want to play with girls or I want to play dress up and I want to do things that quote unquote girls do. And it's really just signifying that there is predominance of a, um, of a creational energy, maybe a predominance of feminine or masculine energy that is quote unquote mismatch with their physical body. But in the ancient times, when beings would show these signs, just like they would show other signs, for example, they're just talking to trees, right? All of a sudden, ascended masters are appearing to them and they see dragons and they're communicating with the earth, okay? These kids are immediately seen by the elders and they're taken into their training to become highly revered seers and oracles and shamans of these societies. Okay? And just as in society, we have hunters, we have gatherers, we have dentists, we have, um, uh, we have miners, we have road builders, okay? we have all sorts of people, we have plumbers. Plumbers is a highly undervalued people. Okay? I had an issue with my basement the other day and septic water was coming up and I had to call a plumber. Now, if plumbers didn't exist, that would be a very shitty world. Literally, that was an accidental pun. But anyway, just as we have all of those very needed professions, people that fulfill a valuable role in society, we have oracles, the shamans, the mystics, the ones that keep society aligned and connected to source. Now that has been under attack in our current society. We have been killing these people. We have been making fun of these people. We have been telling them that they're mentally ill. We have been hanging them. Okay, We have been telling them that they're the devil. Why? Because there is a force that is wanting to sever humanity from source. Okay, And if you're going to sever a whole society, a whole civilization, a whole tribe, let's call it a planetary tribe. If we want to sever this tribe from source, we have to cut off the roles, the people that are meant to hold that connection in place, okay? That is why there has been genocides upon genocides upon persecution rights of these beings, of all of us. That is why we are afraid to speak. We're afraid to shine our light, okay? We have the crown of thorns implant from the crucifixion of Jesus. All of these things, when we think, oh, I'm going to shine my Christos, I'm going to teach humanity about our, you know, destiny. It just almost makes us cry in fear. I've gone through this already. That's why I'm talking to you, right? <laughs> but I know we feel this very deeply. And so our deep mystical shaman seers of society, of course, not all of them are transgender, but some of them have been, they have been slandered and murdered, okay, for a long time, not just trans people, but all deeply spiritual people as well. And more particularly then, you know, without that context, then of course we're going to be yelling, oh, you know, these people have been murdered. These people deserve equal rights. Well, guess what? They shouldn't have quote unquote the same rights and, and reverence because they should actually be in their, like in their highest emanation if they were serving their soul's purpose they would be respected as, you know, the existence of how, they're, how they are. Because right now in society, there's a push to, you know, maybe changing their genders or having them live out their lives as, a, you know, the opposite gender. And all of that is very deeply confusing. The reason why so many of these people are suicidal and, and mentally ill and depressed is because, you know, they don't, they've lost their support system, which has been the elders, which has been the previously um, trained and mastered trans and two-spirit shamans that should already have come into adulthood into their divine glory. Okay. 
<sighs> and so understanding that these beings come in usually with a predominance, like they are in a masculine body, so they already are deeply connected in their masculine body, and then they're exerting or experiencing more feminine energy or the other way around. Traditionally, these people were also seen as messengers or beings that held harmony between the creational forces. Okay, And understanding that our world is a deep fractal and reflection of the cosmic creation that we're really here to experience something very specific particularly to be inside of these female and male bodies particularly to experience the polarity of creation and the joy and the power and the co-creativity that that can bring okay now that has nothing to do with playing with barbies or playing with trucks actually <laughs> And this is when we realize that society has actually degraded and distorted what feminine and masculine energies even are. Okay, and this is part of the confusion agenda. And so all of this is why affirmative care is nonsense, especially for children. And affirmative care is something that they've been pushing, right? And you're dubbed as a bigot. You're dubbed as um, a, a homophobe if you talk about it. But... I feel like those fears are part of the gag order, okay? How many people are afraid to talk about this because they just see it, you know, people getting canceled on the internet just because, um, you know, they're disagreeing with certain ways that this stuff is handled in society. Now, when it comes to children, how many of us will not allow our five-year-old child to get a tattoo or to change ourselves into a cat, okay? Children will say that they are all sorts of different things. And as we said earlier, absolutely, children can begin to notice that they are two-spirit or that they are transgender from the time they're young. But affirmative care is essentially when they begin to tell these children that they are in fact the opposite gender, okay? That male bodies and female bodies are not real and that they can just, if they're born into a male body, then they can be a girl. Okay? And this is actually quite dangerous. It is leading into very dangerous societal mind control, which is at the root of this propaganda. Okay? This has, at this point, no longer have anything to do with rights for trans and rights for homosexual people, which of course we all support. I just spent the first part of this video talking about how these people should actually be highly revered as the divine seers of our planet, of our society. But the issue is now these hospitals are pushing gender reassignment surgery on children. Okay, and this is something that is very horrendous and is a continuation of the genital um, mutilation, the ritual abuse of children, how it's, be it's being basically promoted in our society and normalized. You will see this in recent times when there's this um, group called Gays Against Groomers. Essentially, this is a group of LGBTQ people who are noticing that the elites are once again using the trans community as a scapegoat to basically shield themselves in the normalization of pedophilia. Okay, And they're trying to say that pedophilia is also a normal... Um, sexual orientation, which it absolutely is not. Obviously, we understand why they're trying to do that because I think disclosure is going to happen and they're basically trying to get society to feel bad for them, for them to continue to exist in society, for them to sexualize children and create a very perverted world. They've been doing this for a very long time. I mean, I grew up in the age of Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, I'm in my late 20s now. I discovered pornography at a very young age. This sexualization of children, the early perversion of children, is something that has touched every single one of us. But they have just increased and amped on this agenda in the collective consciousness, particularly attacking the um, elementary school kids, the kindergarten kids, now even teaching uh, gender theory in kindergarten, in third grade, 
okay? And in a lot of different places, um, if a child or a teenager comes out to say that they are trans, then hospitals can have them sign off and give them um, hormone therapy without their parents' consent. This is all very scary because I do not believe in biological sex changes, okay? And I will say something else that is an unpopular opinion. I do not believe in casual sex. I don't believe in casual creation. I believe that all of creation is so sacred. And that is why we have, I mean, how many people on this planet were unwanted by their parents and came early, teenage pregnancies, instead of teaching children how sacred and profound life is, we're teaching them about anal sex. And this is another thing that is literally in the elementary school curriculum sometimes in seventh and eighth grade with graphics, okay? And so this is why people are pulling their kids out of public school. And if your kid is in public school, please go and ask the school board for curriculums. Parents deserve and have rights to that information. Parents reserve the rights to know how their children are being educated and should have the final say because the state should not be the people that are indoctrinating our children. I was born in a communist country and I can tell you firsthand how slippery of a slope this all is. Okay, so just as there is no such thing as casual sex, and there is no such thing, and I'll tell you the reason why, okay? We have a soul, we have a light body, we have hundreds of thousands of delicate fibers of light that connects us all the way back into the universal creation. These fibers of light correspond with our genetics and affect our genetic expression. How we connect to our sexual energy is directly tied into how that creation energy from source is able to flow in and through our anatomy so that we can experience ourself in our highest form. Degrading our sexuality is the quickest and the easiest way to derail that process, to make us forget how sacred we are, to make us forget that we have the power of creation. Think about this for a second. How many people in society have 100% say and control of their creative energy or also can be calculated by their time, okay? Not only are they slaving away at jobs that they don't like or going to school trying to have a life that they can feel safe in, when they get home, there's 80 billion things distracting them, right? TV, junk food, all of these things deplete our energy. So most people have very little control or sovereignty over their creative energy at all. Why is that? Because the society was set up to keep human beings from being in control or being in sovereign say over their own soul's creation, their own soul's destiny. It was designed like that. This is what we call the 3D false matrix soul prison. Every single thing in the society is built to deplete people of their own stream of source creation energy and trap them in a state where they cannot exert their creation energy. And the greatest way they do this is by indoctrinating society that you can have sex for whatever reason with whoever you want on drugs, one night stands, and this is all about sexual liberation. I know that the church has twisted the original Christic stories and we think that, oh, it's all about religious programming and staying, you know, um, not having sex, staying a virgin until marriage and all that stuff. If we can just throw the religious connotation and the control connotations in the garbage and just see it from the perspective of our own personal experience and expression, we see that there are so many um, tactics that are out there to siphon our energy, okay? So there's no such thing as casual sex. There's no such thing as casual child rearing. Let's think about that for a second. When you create a child, okay, that child is gonna go on to have 100 years of lifetime. 
Why do you think that there is so much trauma, anxiety, depression, anxiety? The rates of youth suicide has never been this high, okay? People are not having a good time. And the reason why people are not having a good time is because we have lost touch with the original fabric and template of how humans are meant to exist on the planet. And it's not humanity's fault, okay? There's another agenda that wants to make humans think that is the humans that are evil. Humans are doing this to ourselves. Humans are inherently nasty and that's why we turn into pedophiles. It's all an agenda to take away awareness and the true blame on interdimensional experimentation, abductions, negative alien control, and all of that stuff. Okay, take a deep breath. Okay, so just as there's no casual sex, there is no such thing as a biological sex change through science, through the medical system at this time. I'm really sorry to say that. This has nothing to do with people that have chosen to do this, or people that want to do this, or people think they need to do this. Okay? I love all of those people. I'm sure that all of those souls are beautiful. They're just misinformed because of the society that we have. Like I just said, there are hundreds of thousands of fibers of light, genetic expressions that allow cosmic source energy to fractal through our soul's architecture, our light body, to come into this body, this physical body. And that energy is meant to continue to flow unimpeded so that the destiny of the soul can live out through the body. How many people are living out the destiny of their souls today on this planet, in our society? Not too many. Okay? And again, the reason is all the things that we've listed before. But understanding that, whew, it's difficult, you guys. Because it's so, so sad. This is a level of sexual misery, indoctrination, and manipulation that is unseen in our history. Because we're civilized now, all right? Our civilization is civilized now. We can't, we don't have Mongols just riding through our village and killing people with axes and raping all the women. That is a, a thing of the past. And so these demons have to come up with new ways. And unfortunately, now we have technology, now we have pornography, now we have pharmaceuticals that take things to a new level, takes the bio-spiritual abuse to a new level, okay? And so let's talk about gender dysphoria and how affirmative care is a kind of psychotherapy that is being freely given and pushed upon children. Children that are on TikTok, children that are on social media, that are thinking that this whole transgender thing is just a thing that is cool, okay? Knowing that true trans people make up 0.01% of the population, okay? Scientifically, throughout civilizations, they have made up about 0.01% of populations, and that is that includes transsex people, people that are born with, you know, both sexual organs or partial sexual organs. And it's possible that this number is slightly less than it actually is, but not by much, okay? And the majority of these people will show signs in their early years, like by the time they're two years old, they are already showing signs of this. They are talking to their parents about this, okay? Now, in the last decade, we have seen a 4,000% increase in trans youths, predominantly in girls. Historically, before 2012, most transgendered beings were boys that were born into male bodies that feel feminine energy. Okay? It was almost unheard of that there are girls who are born into a female body that want to be boys. Previous to 2012, it was basically scientifically undocumented. In the last decade, we have seen a 4,000% increase in trans youth, and most of them are teen girls. Okay? Why is that? Okay, I have some theories about that, but we're going to go into that in a second, okay? So... The tricky thing with this is most of those people will have normal childhoods. 
They will love to play dress up. They were always girly until they're teenagers. And they're usually smart girls, right? And they hit high school. They're on social media. They're on TikTok. All of a sudden on TikTok, when you're making an account, you can choose from a billion different pronouns and you can identify as any gender. And this is being just taught to our young kids. And this is a cool thing to do. You instantly gain friends. You instantly gain societal approval if you hop on this new trend, this new bandwagon, okay? And then comes in comes this affirmative care, which is so damaging because now these people are being um, led to these psychologists who are offering affirmative care, which is basically affirming whatever the whatever the client is saying, you're affirming what they're saying. Now, those in the healing profession know how ridiculous that is because you don't affirm people's depression. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to parcel everything out so that hopefully by the end of the session, people have more clarity and they're less confused and they're not just going, you know, it's like an alcoholic. We're going to affirm alcoholism and saying, you know what? All of your problems are going to be solved if you just drink alcohol, okay? For a lot of these girls, you know, they are depressed. They are anxious. They are, you know, the smart girls who don't fit in. And so now they're being pushed to affirm their transition. And then they're being started on hormone, hormone therapy. And they're even being pushed to have surgery, surgical removal of breasts, of their sexual organs. It's actually absurd, okay? The number of sexual reassignment, gender reassignment surgery clinics for youths at hospitals, it's actually nauseating, okay? Because let's talk about gender dysphoria for a second. What's being pushed right now is the idea that gender change, gender change therapy, is a solution for gender dysphoria. It's the treatment for gender dysphoria. And what gender dysphoria is, is it used to be called gender identity disorder. And essentially it's this incessant discomfort in the biological form, right? People feel like they're born into the wrong body. Most people feel like it's uncomfortable being in a physical body already because of the amount of distortion and degradation there is to our biological body. Most humans alive on this planet right now don't like being in a body that much because we're just constantly bombarded with toxins, with anti-self viruses, okay? Kids born into this culture now believe that all of that discomfort is because it's because of gender dysphoria and they can change all of it by just having a surgery or taking hormones and just becoming another gender. And that is the agenda that is being pushed. Now, we got to think about this for, for a second because why are they uncomfortable when they are, let's say, in the case of true trans people, okay, a true transgender being, a true predominantly feminine being that is a soul that is walked into a male body or a masculine cord energy that is inside of a female body. Okay, they are uncomfortable because our society, no matter what people says, has ingrained these solidified gender roles, gender identities, and it's, uh, it doesn't have a room or a place or a specific designation for intersex and trans people. In the ancient times, there was, okay, people that are born into the polarized body that they feel from a young, from, from youth, they are being educated, they're being taught, they're being supported by their tribe to know that they are totally accepted and valued and welcomed and perfect as they are. There's nothing wrong with them. Okay? So kids that are born in those societies, I don't think that they're going to feel like they're in the wrong body. They feel like they're in the wrong body because the society is constantly telling them, well, if you want to play with dresses and want to be with girls, then maybe you can be a girl. Guess what? There's no such thing as a medical 
biological sex change. Do you know why? It's because humans do not have the technology to build sexual organs. Why? Because our sexual organs are the most creationally connected divine organs. They are part of our system that can allow us to create a whole other living being. Okay, that means a stargate. That means our sexual organs can literally connect to the other dimensions, allow souls and spirits from the other dimensions to enter into this world, into a whole new experience. That is how profound our sexual organs are. I guarantee there is no scientist on the planet that can construct a body part like that without that awareness. Okay, and then without that awareness, then what are we really doing? What are the side effects? What are the spiritual byproducts of chemically and physically altering our body? And so I feel so sad because this agenda is pushing the kids to do this. But the science actually says that sex changes increases mental disorder, increases suicide. Even though this surgery and these um, solutions are being sold as the be-all, end-all healing modality for gender dysphoria, right? If you feel like you're in the wrong body, we'll just build you a new sex organ. It's being sold to these kids, then they're not telling them about the um, medical risks, okay? There's just no, I mean, even with adults, nobody's talking about the risks of sex changes, the spiritual implications, the biospiritual incarnational impact of cosmetic surgeries, okay? And so the impact of that then is clear in the science is that it increases depression, increases suicide. Why? Because we have messed with the part of our anatomy that literally allows creation energy into the body, literally allows us to have connection to creation itself. That is what we're messing with, okay? And why is that? This is age old, okay? This, these nefarious groups, negative um, fallen angelic, negative alien Beings have long been manipulating humanity to hijack our sexual creation abilities, hijack even the angelic templates of creation abilities. They do this by inverting the polarities. So instead of this cohesive magnetic harmony that is giving rise to this free energy, which is cosmic creation energy that we have infinite access to inside of our body, we're inverting the polarities and inverting the creational forces. And we're, this in itself is a creation level act of biospiritual abuse. Okay. And so some of these programs include the sexual misery program, the relationship romance um, torture <laughs> technologies. Okay. Because... Our heart, our sexual energy, these are the greatest source of energy, of vital life force. And so, so long as we can find ways to inverse, hijack, distort, degrade, deform, traumatize those energies, then the greater loosh these beings are able to hijack. Now think about the level of creational distress and misery a person is in if they believe they were born into the wrong biology. Instead of being honored and revered for their soul being exactly in the body that they were meant to be in. It is so, so sad. Right? And so if there were no designated gender roles, whew, let's just breathe for a second. Let's just breathe together for a second because this is a really intense conversation and I just feel so much compassion and love. You know, this isn't really a, a, um, an attack or a, a critical uh, critique on the movement itself. It's really just unveiling the agenda 
the nefarious propaganda that is behind all of this. It's not the fault of humans. It's not the fault of these teenagers. It's not the fault of these adults that have gone through, you know, sex changes. Whew, and, you know, at this point, I have watched a lot of interviews. I have done a lot of just peeking into these people's biologies and biospiritual systems. I have looked at these kids, by the way, one of these kids is Desmond the Amazing. If you look at the interviews of these kids, you will literally just cry. Like, this is a 10-year-old kid that is being paraded around as a 10-year-old drag that is showing up at these adult event, pride events, strutting the runway in very sexual um, dance moves, sexualized clothing, okay? And every interview that you see, you know, he's almost got these gray eyes. And in one live stream clip that I saw, he literally knew how to do ketamine. This is a 10 year old child. Okay. Somebody in the live stream comments were like, do you guys do ketamine? And he literally did the gesture of snorting drugs. And those of you that are in the know about kids grooming in the elite ritual circles, whew, we know that these kids are often drugged in these situations. And when you look at this child, if you have any level of psychic seeing at all, you will see that his field is definitely manipulated by the grades. You will see all of this psychological and mind control infiltration. And he will say things like, oh, I'm so grateful. I love my mother. But you can tell that there is no joy behind the words that he's speaking. Like expression is not just articulation, right? When I'm speaking things, you can feel the energy and where it's coming from. So when you see this child that he's just saying, oh, I love doing this, you can tell that somebody told him to say those things and he's just being paraded out in public. Having been groomed to perform in this deranged way, this is absolutely not okay. And this is the reality that they want for your children. This is the reality that they're pushing for your children. They want your children to be okay with sex workers dancing out in the street. I have nothing against nightclub culture about, well, actually, <laughs> no such thing as casual sex, okay? But we're, that's not what we're talking about here. I have nothing against sex workers, absolutely. They are beings, they are souls, they are humans that are apart from the nefarious agenda. We need to be able to talk about the agenda and still have compassion and love, unconditional love and acceptance. I will have a meal and communicate and get to know the stories of any one of those people. And it's very sad, you know, that our society has lost touch with the original state of our sexuality. All of those things need to be able to be true concurrently for us to have clear understanding and lucid um, presence when we walk through this world, right? Okay. <sighs> so that is what they're pushing for your kids. They want your kids to grow up not knowing what boys are and what girls are. In the most recent updates of the elementary school curriculum in Portland, they are just straight up saying this is a person with a penis and this is a person with a vulva instead of girls and boys. And that is literally just delusional to say that our biological designs is completely irrelevant and a non-existent reality. It's actually the definition of delusion okay and they want when you think about it the false matrix exists by delusion to believe that there is no soul to believe that there is no divine orchestration that in itself is an illusion too but it's the delusion is an illusion that we all not we but society believes because of the indoctrination that we have already gone through so they're taking this to the next level now with the eradic eradication of gender. Okay. Now, expression of masculine and feminine energy is on an infinite spectrum. Absolutely. The infinite spectrum of our soul exists in male or female bodies predominantly, with the exception of 0.01% of the population. 
And we've already discussed why that population exists in the divine and why they are so valued and needed in our human society. Okay. Uh, of course, we haven't really touched the chemical warfare, the hormones that are in our food, the pesticides, and how that's all affecting our biological and hormonal systems. But we're not going to dive into that today. So at this point, I just want to say thank you for still being here. Thank you for talking about these things with me. Alex wants us to talk about solutions. And with any solution, it's always about coming into alignment with these things in yourself. And I'm going to make a plug. This video is sponsored by this upcoming event that I'm going to be doing. It's called Healing the Womb 3, um, Activating the Original Divine Mother Goddess Priestesshood. The links are in the description. I am inviting two Divine Feminine Oracles to teach this weekend-long event with me, Indy Indigo Angel and Marguerite Rigolioso. We're going to be diving deep into the original templates of our female bodies. Sorry, guys, if you want to study original male bodied divine architecture, you can join my academy, Earth Star Academy. This is the stuff that we teach and we train. We learn about our light body, about incarnation. We have trans people in the school because this applies to everyone. It's about the soul's respect and experience in the physical body and how we can come into the full potential of that human destiny and step into the destiny, the freedom, the sovereign ability to live out our soul's intent in this life through knowledge of our own body and our light bodies. This event here is for women. Marguerite Rigolioso is a teacher of divine birth and parthenogenesis. This is the highest Siddic power that a female body can experience now, I believe that we can all be parthenogenically creating our reality and women, particularly, I'm in a woman's body. That's why I hold events for women, okay? I don't feel like it's appropriate for me to hold particularly events for males. I know that there's other people that can do this out there. Um, we do go into incarnational sciences for men in the Earth Star Academy but this event is for women, we are coming together to remember the highest form of our divine anatomy. This is the solution. Embodying the highest form of our own divine anatomy brings these templates back to earth, holds the vectors, holds the structures of reality so that others, you become an emanation of this original geometry. Okay, you become an emanation, you don't even have to maybe say things because you're so comfortable and you're radiating so much divine creation and that creation energy, you will bet your bottom that it will move you into the solutions that you are meant to carry forth into reality in this life. Some of the other solutions include studying your public school's curriculum. If your kid is in public school, you owe it to your children to know exactly what they are teaching them in school so you can at least have conversations about it with them. If your schools are, in fact, taking on these ideologies, you can show up to a school board meeting. But more important than anything is truly integrating and activating these original templates within yourself. And so we're also going into the interdimensional sexual misery programs, breeding programs, implants, and tags, all the way back into the history of the Lemurian Holocaust with Indigo Angel on the entire second day. Um, every day is two workshops and one activation. And the third day, I'm going to be transmitting about the original divine creational templates of the uh, dragon mother consciousness and the original teachings of Hieros Gamos. If you're somebody that um, aligns with the original teachings of the twin soul, the twin flames, not the bogus garbage <laughs> that is almost like this cartoonified version of the true teachings of twin path, which is, again, the most holy and reverent divine path for one to take. You're essentially, when you're on a twin journey, you're on a journey of avatar incarnation in your own self. It's not really about manifesting your dream partner, even though you are meant to experience the full embodiment of your divinity, the avatar incarnation in pairs. Okay, 
The twin flames are meant to experience that in pairs, but it has nothing to do with the romanticized having the man of your dreams. It has to do with your path of incarnation, of your fulfillment as an avatar at this time, embodiment of divine source. So you can fractal into this world, the original divine creation energy that this world so sorely needs, divine love, right? So these are the solutions is diving into not being satisfied with the um, limits that you have within yourself of what you're capable of experiencing in, in your lifetime. You might have your five-year, 10-year, 30-year goal. It shouldn't just be retiring, okay? You should have a goal that you're here to radically change the world back into its original state. Being a embodiment of Christed knowledge, Christed love, Christed templates. The only way that we can do that is by embodying those things in our day-to-day -day life. Remembering our own source, allowing that source to overlight our living experiences and have a love for creation so deep in your heart that it moves you to make all sorts of actions that your mind might think is crazy or scary, or you might want to speak in ways that you're afraid of offending people. But when you're coming from divine love, that truth, right? We're removing the gags and there are gags, right? That's why we're afraid to speak these things. We want to keep silent. We're scared of being persecuted. We don't want to have these tough conversations with our neighbors. When we do, it comes off as, you know, being controlling. That's because we haven't aligned our own light body to a place where when we speak, it's coming from pure divine love. I'm finding that, you know, once we've gone through this enough healing in ourselves, people are dying to listen to us. Humanity is confused and they're waiting for us to come into the grounded loving state so that we can explain some of these two th uh, things to them. But without understanding, without embodiment, we're not going to be able to explain anything to them while being heard, without being controlling, right? So that is the solution. And these are the things that we hold space for in the Earth Star Academy. Tiffany says, is it okay to attend if we don't wish to have children in this life? Absolutely. This has nothing to do with children. Creation, in our society, we are fooled into believing that the only way we can create is through creating children. But the truth is we can create timelines, new hospital systems, new foster care systems, new education systems, systems that truly heal the underlying causes of homelessness. All of creation is waiting to work through the souls that are willing to do the work that it's required to be a divine sovereign creator being, which is your divine birthright. And that's what we're talking about. That is the level of creation that we're engaging in. And of course, if you're creating children with that perspective, you're going to be bringing in avatar souls. And we do talk about that as well. So divine birth Parthenogenic birth is not just about bringing in souls, even though it can be, but it's also about the highest timelines. In this group, we're going to be doing a group um, grid work mission on the 9-11, which is going to be birthing a new ley line system or amplifying this new ley line system. And ley line systems are important because the more amplified they are, the easy it is for people to actually wake up and hop onto the organic timelines. We're basically at war with the Masonic grid or the negative Masonic grid or the electric false AI grids, right? And in order for like right now, the AI grids are kind of dominant. So in order for people to um, find freedom, find liberation from those grids, we have to amplify the new grids, the ancient, new, original, future, <laughs> original but new grids that we have brought here to the earth that we can amplify through our DNA and through our own, through upgrading the own lay systems inside of our own light body. So that's what this event is about. That's what the Earth Star Academy is about. Um, these weekend events give us this opportunity to accelerate, but really the Earth Star Academy, like it is a process that the Galactics and I have curated specifically for us to learn the path of Christic incarnation. 
And it's an embodied guided process for our human self to come into alignment with our soul aspects that are in pure union, absolute union, absolute union with source. Okay. And so let's go ahead then to finish up our conversation here is that at the end of the day, our souls are having an experience in the body and souls can incarnate into a male or a female or very, very, very rarely into an intersex body. I kind of think that the increase in the intersex body has to do with genetic experimentation, has to do with chemical warfare, okay? Because I know that there are experiments that are happening. There is a town in Dominican Republic where there is a higher percentage of hermaphroditic bodies being born than anywhere else in the world. It's like some crazy percentage, like 40% or something. Okay, don't quote me on that. But it's a reality there. And why is that? We don't know. But for all intents and purposes, it could be any variety of things. It's definitely a genetic anomaly. Okay? So less than 0.01% of bodies are born intersex. The rest of us, the rest of the heavy majority are born into a male or a female body and a soul is having an experience in the body and the soul at the source of our being it's creation itself it's androgynous it's not feminine or masculine but a complete cycle of both of those energies mastering those two energies is an art and this is an art that my Taoist ancestors have teach has been teaching me through my vessel because it's really about a mastery of polarity okay this is about the mastery of creation this is the most fun thing that we could be thinking about instead of you know why we feel feminine what is the deeper gnosis we could be learning about and it's that our feminine and masculine energies inside of us give us the ability to literally create things okay create timelines create our dream life create peace and abundance on the planet, create solutions which heal poverty, create art, create whatever we want to create. This is our power. This is our naturally in, natural endowment. We were created in the image and likeness of creation itself, imbued with feminine and masculine energies so we can have the power of creation. Okay? And so without knowing our bodies do chemically and hormonally polarize us in some ways. There are certain hormones like testosterone, estrogen, hormones that polarize us towards feminine and masculine expressions. Okay, that's just the thing with bodies. Now, souls are always both. Souls always carry both. Even if you're predominantly a feminine energy, you will still have masculine energy. And I know that there's people that teach polarity meaning in this lifetime you are meant to polarize into feminine or polarize into masculine i believe that there's different paths for the highly genetically templated beings 48 strands 24 strands genetic templates you are here to embody the double diamond sun body which means that you are embodying the high king high queen templates inside of yourself you're embodying the hieroscamic union to its full potential inside of yourself. Okay? And then those twin pairs will come together and basically have a... Uh, how do we even describe it? A quadruple exponential divine creation, divine union in very many um, facets. There are also those souls who are here to experience the complete polarity of feminine and complete polarity of masculine and come together in those polar, beautiful polar relationships, okay? All of those are possibilities. So that's just for those of you who are seeing the polarity teachings and you're like, I don't fully resonate with that. I love dresses, but I don't really resonate with just being in my feminine. You could be here to mastery both, which is a difficult path, right? Is a mystery school path because you're essentially needing to master both energies and balance them inside for the purpose of acting out your soul's divine destiny to create planetary realities. <laughs> okay. 
отключаем. Okay, so let's see here. The Christic perspective is that souls come from source and are made of divine love, and souls incarnate into these bodies, and bodies are intricately designed vessels. We've already gone through this, okay? Bodies are animated by souls, and the way that souls animate the body is a whole science. That is the basis of Christic energy anatomy, of ascension, of incension. The whole science of ascension, or whatever you want to call it, is the science of incarnation. Incarnation is the high science of souls incarnating to the bodies and bodies becoming and reaching their divine potential of avatar, of soul and God incarnate, of, and by the way, this has nothing to do with ego and an ego identifying as God. It has to do with the union of divine consciousness with matter, the definition of Christ, so much so is that it activates the genetically dormant abilities of human capabilities, evolving human into our potential. And that's when we begin to activate our Siddic abilities, like the great beings that have walked before. Okay. So all that being said, there could be so many reasons why somebody feel like they're in the wrong body, right? Um, it could be that they have a feminine energy, predominant essence in a male body. It could be the vice versa of that. Okay? And there's nothing wrong or abnormal about that. In fact, it's perfectly right. If we were to show kids or tell them that it's totally okay to be feminine in a boy's body, to be masculine in a girl's body, it just means that you are meant to have that experience. And that experience is here to teach you something on a soul level. Souls and God do not make accidents like this. Okay? There's nothing or abnormal or wrong about that. doesn't mean that we're in the wrong body. And aside from that, there's a lot of other reasons. So I have worked with many people that are trans that do feel a lot of depression, anxiety, misery, self-hatred. And there's other nefarious reasons that they might feel like they're in a wrong body, like past life trauma, genetic and ancestral trauma, childhood sex abuse, interdimensional sexual abuse, social engineering, interdimensional abductions, and alien experimentation. All of that stuff obviously can't be explored by the psychologists and the psychiatrists who are performing the affirmative care, which means that it is non-holistic care is not care that is oriented to supporting souls to reach their soul's destiny potential. And this is, you know, kind of the premise of my, of my talk today. Okay. And so, yeah, um, we need to remove the gag orders and not keep silent, not be afraid that we're going to be persecuted. Uh, when we come from a pure, desire to lift up humanity, okay, to actually liberate people from suffering, not just saying, oh, you know, oh, you know, you, you want to be this, like, you can be whatever you want, I'll just go along with your story, that's not real love, that's going along, and what's the word, when somebody um, is, Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, it's like if somebody is an alcoholic, you're like, you know what? Go ahead and drink. It's fine. As long as it makes you kind of happy, right? And then obviously the main thing of this is needing to be grounded and human. Don't get crazy. If you ex exude perfect love as your ultimate sign of spiritual embodiment, you can have these conversations with anyone. Uh, maybe not the super programmed people <laughs> and those people are very interesting a lot of people think that they are non-player non-player characters npcs non-playable characters as they say where it's like are they actually a soul are they super young souls 
it's all a possibility at this point because I have looked into that archetype where there's literally 0% authentic thoughts. Everything that they believe deeply is something that they got from an external source. There is no organic um, or authentic thought. And they're usually very mean and degrading to others. Like they're not really there to have a conversation where it's like, okay, here's what I think. Here's what you think. We love each other. We respect each other. They're really out there to kind of attack you for your beliefs and stuff. I think we've all seen those people. Now, I believe that those people at this point are basically drones, programmed, um, non-playing characters. Um, I believe that once the grid systems change, that those people will naturally shift because that's like the thing it's like they're receiving their information from the external so if we shift the external if we shift the planetary grid if we shift you know the media that's out there and this is why again coming into the fullness of our creative potential is so important and that is what the earth star academy is all about is because we we can create if we had billions of dollars we can create campaigns, right? We can have an entire marketing campaign for the second coming of Christ, which is a consciousness, right? An embodiment, a movement that we are all here to be a part of is just the return of God's love to the heart of humanity, to the heart of earth civilization. That's as simple as it is. Of course, in that simple phrase, there is an immense mystery school of knowledge and that is the knowledge of incarnation but if we were to master creation and step out of these victimized stories that we've been fed that we're powerless we're leaking our creation energy everywhere because we were born into the false matrix and that's literally the programs that they propagated it's time to delete those programs and reinstall our original template and bring back all our creation energy so we can Remerge with the vector of our soul as our soul had when our soul incarnated into this planet and some of the feedback that we have in the school are people saying things like you know i've been in this path for 30 years i finally feel grounded and like i'm aligned with my mission i finally feel like i have found my way to my mission i finally feel like i can start my mission i'm grounded in my mission you know i get these messages all day long from students because it's really next level stuff that we're sharing in our mystery school hope you check it out hope you come out to our event over the 9 11 we're doing some major grid work we're going to be taking down neutralizing some nefarious portals and gate systems and we're going to be amplifying the organic system this is the behind the scenes behind the matrix work that we do and we also do in the matrix work, like creating new systems, right? Reclaiming our creative energy to the point where we have the ability and the power to create a whole new world. And that is what we're here to do. We're here to create heaven on earth in a grounded, material, embodied, functional, practical way, in joy, in communion with God, in delight, in curiosity, in excitement. That's what it's supposed to feel like as a starseed. If you're a starseed, you're here to experience the ultimate um, inheritance <laughs> of human potential and here to be a role model, uh, a lighthouse, a role, um, a, a path cutter, right? For humanity, that's what we're here to do. So if you're not feeling that way, we're here on Starseed Mission Support broadcasting these frequencies. And we're also here in the Starseed Academy. We will go into grid work and things like that in the intermediate levels. And also I recommend going out and checking out Indigo Angel's channel. She does a lot of grid work over her on her channel. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this discussion. I'm so happy that I finally got to have this conversation, just get this all on my chest. You guys have no idea how disturbed I am by these agendas, and you should be too. You should be furious, okay? 
Go have these conversations with your friends, with your family. Come from the place of love, of unity, of respect, right? Ask them if they know about the ancient trans people and how they are revered in their societies. Talk about the inner feminine, the inner masculine, and how our sexuality is meant to liberate us into union with creation. And all of those things become very easy to talk about when they are embodied and you are operating in that. So that's a huge part of the work is the internal work. But turning a blind, a blind eye to this situation is not the case as many you know, as, uh, a many great generals will say, never underestimate your enemy. <laughs> okay. And we are we are in a spiritual war, in case you haven't noticed. This spiritual war has waged for a really long time. It's not against women, it's not against homophobes, it's not against gays, it's not against any race. It's against divinity itself. It's against the holiness of humanity. It is against the very destiny of our collective human potential. Hey, Matthew, what's up? Long time no see. So that being said, I hope that this has been inspirational for you. This is the path that I'm on. These are the people that I'm calling out calling for i want to be um over the next years you know working on this uh, working on the uh the incarnation of the avatar the complete embodiment of our divine human potential and i hope to walk this path with you i think we're gonna have a great time i i think we barely have any idea of how <laughs> amazing and beautiful it's, it's going to get, okay? And so in order for that to happen, though, we need to get to work. We need to get serious about it. We need to believe in ourselves. We need to believe in our creator power. We need to believe in the God inside of us. And we need to believe that the second coming of Christ is occurring right now through every single one of us. This is the core mission of the 144,000. Okay? We are all remembering the original teachings, knowledge of Christ. That is our Christic anatomy. That is the ultimate fulfillment of our human potential. Okay? And so, with that being said, go check out the event. The link is in the description. And I'm so excited to share this event with you. Um, these ladies are priestess, like immense oracles and experts in their own, uh, in their own rights. Next week, I'm going to be posting a video where the three of us go deep into some of these topics and it's going to be ridiculous. So anyway, I love you guys so, so much. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode and I will see you next week. Bye for now.